Hello, so in this video, I just want to go ahead and show you how I actually made this pumpkin filter recently for Halloween. So I'll just quickly go through the process of how I actually set this up in Cinema 4D and then later we'll jump into Spark and I'll show you that how I actually link the user's facial data uh, to animate the pumpkin. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here's the scene setup in Cinema 4D and uh, the pumpkin model I actually purchased it, for, I purchased it from Turbo Squid. I'll leave the link uh, down in the description below if you're interested in buying it. Now let's go ahead and uh, see what's in the pumpkin model itself. So over here I have a couple of things set up. So let's go ahead and dive into the pose morph tag, pose morph tag first. Uh, so pose morph tag is nothing but uh, a way of deforming the geometry and animating the uh, deformation. So can see that uh, I have a couple of poses here. I have six poses uh, and each of the poses are individually animatable. So if I just uh, uh, drag this letter here, you can see that uh, this is a smile pose. So it's uh, making the pumpkin smile. I also have a mouth open like that. I also have a blink for the eyes as well as uh, eye raise like that. Uh, now over here, uh, in the basics tab, let's actually, let me show you how you can actually quickly set up a pose morph. So let's uh, grab a primitive first, make sure it's editable. I hit C on the keyboard. Uh, go right click on the object and uh, make sure go to uh, rigging. Under rigging, you'll find a pose morph uh, tag. Click on that, you can see this uh, icon appear on your object. So over here in under the mixing, there's a couple of uh, checkboxes. So uh, the one I used for the pumpkin is, uh, let's see, it's points. So uh, the thing is, uh, if you're animating or if you're demo deforming the geometry on uh, on an object, make sure you select points because that's going to be storing the uh, you know position data on the points itself. So let's go ahead and uh, select points. Now let's go ahead and grab a brush tool. So let's go under the mesh over here. We'll see a tab called brush. Let's tear that out for now. And let me grab this tool, it's called grab. So with this, it will uh, just grab polygons around the, uh, you know, circle and you can kind of drag them around. So oh, one thing I forgot to mention is before you start uh, deforming your mesh or anything like that, make sure uh, under the tag, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, this thing. So over here, once you select the points, uh, you should go next to the tag. So over here, you'll see a couple of things you'll see uh, two buttons, one for edit, one for animate. Now you can animate these sliders if you want them to. And uh, over here you'll, you can add more poses if you need. So this is a box where you'll see all your poses. So right now there's a base pose, that's the actual sphere, you can't change that. Uh, and there's a pose that comes by default. Now you can delete this, add, you can do whatever you want. You can add more poses, but by default it comes with pose.0. So make sure this pose is selected. And uh, once that's selected, you can go ahead and uh, deform it however you want. So let's do that, something like that. And uh, let's, you can uh, drag the slider around and you can see that uh, that's, it's deforming. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a quick way to set it up. And uh, let's see. Okay, under, if I just expand the pumpkin object over here, and see I have a couple of joints. Now these joints are there to kind of give a physical dynamic, you know, dynamics to the object. Now, I made a tutorial on how you can uh, create dynamics and physics in Spark AR using joints. I leave the link to the, in, I leave the link to that in the description below if you're interested. Uh, okay, so let's see. Okay, now you can't see the joints. That's because I have them disabled. So let's go ahead and enable them. So here uh, you can see that the joints that I have kind of in the star shape. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what each of them do. Uh, let's, yeah. So the eye, if I just expand that, you can see that uh, I have two joints that controls the eyes. If I just move them around, you can see uh, how they move. Now this is gonna be linked to the user's eyeball. So wherever the user looks, uh, the pumpkin also looks that direction. So I made sure we have a joint for that. I also have a joint, I mean, a couple of joints over here. For this thing, I'm not sure what, it, what it's called, but I but I think uh, I'll call it as the handle. So if I just select all of them, you can see that uh, you know, they kind of move like that. Now this is also, this is all gonna be uh, reacting dynamically to, depending on which way the user uh, moves their head or rotates the head. Um, let me just undo that. Also, I have a couple of joints here. Now these are basically joints uh, for, which make the, 
kind of uh, it gives kind of a fleshy feel to the pumpkin. So if I just go ahead and grab those joints and rotate them, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, yeah, now you can see that it kind of gives that uh, jiggly feel, a jiggle, kind of a fleshy feel. So this is going to be dynamically reacting again to the user's uh, head rotation and position. You can quite uh, see it well if I enable the wireframe like that. Uh, all of these are manually painted, so I haven't used a, I mean, uh, uh, an automatic bind. So usually what you do is once you have your joint set up and you want to bind the joints to the uh, mesh itself, what you actually do is you go to the uh, character. Under the character, you find something called bind. So right now it's grayed out because I don't have my object selected. So if I just select that, you can see there's an option called bind. So once you press this, what it's going to do is it's going to be uh, kind of automatically assigning weights to each joint uh, for the object. Now I didn't do that, I actually just custom painted this uh, my way. So I'll just uh, show you how it looks like, my uh, weights. If I just go into the weight manager, uh, let me let me just uh, delete this for now so that you can see better the weights. So you can see that uh, the weights are quite very, very mild. Uh, it says on, on this blue box, it says it's only giving a strength of around 25%. Um, so that's my weight setup. Uh, I custom painted this now. Comments below if you want uh, kind of an in-depth video on how to video on how to paint weights and that sort of stuff. I can make a tutorial on that. Let me know in the comment section below. But this is just to quickly show you how I actually did this, and uh, that should be pretty much it. Uh, this is just my weight setup, and uh, I think that's pretty much it for the Cinema 4D part. Let's go ahead and jump into Sparkair, and I'll show you how I set up the scene there. All right, so here we are in Spark and uh, let's see what we can start with. So in the patch editor over here, which I have already opened up, it's it's quite big. I didn't expect it to become this big um, initially. It's uh, it's very confusing right now, but I'll, I'll just uh, walk you over through what it actually does. Okay, anyway, uh, over here in the object manager, I have the pumpkin model itself with all the joints, as you can see. And I have a couple of uh, the 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 the, the post morphs that's been imported as well. Now this is this is uh, brought in through GLB as a GLB format. I have tried FBX, but uh, I don't know. Not sure. Uh, sometimes the post morphs wouldn't import be imported with FBX. Not sure why. Uh, so GLB works fine. I think GLB is a good uh, the best actually uh, to import into Spark. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, all these blend shapes are being controlled by uh, either the eyeballs, the eye, the eyebrow, the the eyelid, the cheek, the chin, as well as a mouth openness. So all these are being uh, uh, derived from the face tracker, from the face uh, data. So all these are going to be controlling individual pose more. So let's say, for example, the 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 chin, for example, the chin. Uh, it's also being combined with the face, op I mean the mouth open. So this is being combined together to kind of average a uh, pretty reasonable value. Uh, and that's driving the uh, blend shape for the mouth. So uh, basically all this in the middle that you see, if I just delete that and uh, directly link the facial data to the pose morphs, that would work fine as well. But all this in the middle that you see is just basically an approximation of values that... Uh, that that makes it work more well and more smoother with uh, the user's facial um, facial features. I'd say at least my facial features. So uh, if I just zoom into some of these, you can see it's just a kind of exponential exponential smoothing that just smooths it out, smooths it smooths it out uh, from range just to kind of uh, get values from this particular range. That's from zero point. 0 0.04 to this range, and then I just add it, divide it. All this is just basically an approximation of what values that I found good to work with the post morphs. Uh, you'll figure this out on your on yourself once you do this. It's nothing much. It's all pretty simple math stuff. And uh, the joints that I have, yeah, the the eye the eye joints that uh, moves with the user's uh, facial not facial the eye movement. Uh, the one that I showed over here, let me just undo the the ones over here. This one, uh, this one's being controlled by the eyeball position and rotation. So this one's over here, I think. 
yeah, the joints for the eyeballs are over here. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate actually what it looks like. So you can see that the pumpkin kind of uh, has a jiggly feel when I move the head around. Hope you can see that. I can exaggerate this effect. Uh, I'm not sure where the values for that are right now. Uh, it's quite, uh, let's see though. I think I can find it. Let me see. Okay. Not really sure where it is right now because it's so big. Uh, I must have forgotten where all of those values are. Oh, I think it, this is the one. I think so. Yep, I think this is one for sure. So, okay, so let me go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's uh, do this one. Let's multiply it by some crazy number. Let's say 150. Not sure. Okay, that's uh, very exaggerated, but you can see that uh, I think that's kind of glitching out actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I just want to show you that uh, the pumpkin jiggles. And uh, one thing that I liked actually is, uh, this, this was kind of new to me. I didn't know how to make this before. So let me just demonstrate this. Let me just, yep. Okay, so you can see there's a quite uh, nice bloom happening around the mouth and the eyes as well. So if I just go into the uh, viewport, you can see that uh, there's a nice quite shine going on around the mouth and the eyes. And these get controlled, these get dimmed or, uh, you know, bright, depending on the openness of the eyes and mouth. So when the mouth is open, the there's a bloom happening. So uh, this is being controlled by, let me go ahead and show you actually how it happens. So in the original project, I have this kind of a plane setup that's uh, going from a small size to a big size. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I used a cloner to make this. And uh, if I go back into Spark, I have this texture applied on that. Which, is, which looks like this. It's basically a really faint brush that I took on Photoshop and just stamped it a couple of times. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's how I made this bloom effect. It's really nice actually how it came out. I really like it. If I just, uh, oh, let's see. You can see that without the bloom and with the bloom, it just makes it more realistic and nice looking. So I think that's pretty much it that I, how much I want to show you. Let me, let me know if you uh, want to kind of uh, learn more in-depth stuff about rigging or pose more so i'll make a tutorial on that if uh, people are interested so anyhow that's pretty much it and i hope you enjoyed the tutorial i hope you learned something new uh, anyway that's pretty much it and i'll see you in the next tutorial take care